Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, well, if you guys are anything like me, you may have a 24 valve Cummins and you may have a lift pump that is struggling or dying or is just dead junk. So this is going to be a video on how to do the Holly Blue fuel pump um, mod on the 24 valve Cummins. Um, there's not a video out about it and I, there really needed to be one. So here I am making this video for you guys. Uh, it's a very, very easy install. I realized that when I installed the gauges, I had about maybe 12 PSI idle, and I know that's on the low side, and it just, from then on, it just progressively got worse. Started to, started to see nine PSI at idle, so I knew I had to do something. Can't really afford a fast right now. And um, I did a lot of forum searching, and everyone on the forum, not everyone, but there's a, quite a few people on the forums that were talking about it. A Holly Blue fuel pump um, as like more of like a pusher pump that mounts by your tank and um, it's supposed to increase your fuel pressure so your BP doesn't die. So I did the mod. I absolutely love it, and uh, I'm gonna. And I could not find one video on YouTube how to do this, so I did it myself. I did a little forum searching, kind of got a general idea of it, and. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I did because I know it would help me to watch a video, so. Okay, so this is what you're going to need to buy. Holly High Performance Fuel Pump. There's the part number from Holly right there. Now my local discount auto parts had this in stock on the shelf. I have a friend who works there, so I was able to get employee discount, so I ended up paying 127 bucks for this thing. Um, so you're gonna need this. It's gonna come with a regular, it's gonna come with a regulator, which you're obviously not gonna use. Regular mounting bracket. And it's gonna come with a pump, a way blue pump. Um, you're gonna need pipe cutter to cut your metal fuel lines right by your tank. Um, this is the bigger of the two. The little one is the exact same price as this, or $10.99. Um, I would definitely recommend the little one. It's much easier to get in between the frame rail, spin it all the way around. I thought bigger was better for the same price. I was wrong. It'll still work. It'll still get the job done. It's just more of a pain in the ass. Um, but, yep. And some 3 8 fuel hose to connect into there. So let's go into the truck and I'll show you exactly what I did. All right, as you can see, we are underneath the truck. Here's the fuel tank. So you're gonna start off by, which this was one thing I couldn't even find on online how to do or which one it was. You're gonna cut your supply line. Your supply line is the, you're gonna have two lines. Normally we're running that bracket, return supply. So it's your bottom line. It's also thicker than your return line. Um, so you're gonna cut that line. I cut it back here, probably about here, just with the, uh, I think it's like actually like a brake line cutter. Um, if you're gonna do that, I would recommend the smaller brake line cutter. I bought the bigger one because it was the same price, um, but the smaller one, you're able to get in here in between the frame rail and spin it around and have a nice, much nicer cut. Um, so basically you're gonna slip your 3 8 hose after you cut that, you slip your 3 8 hose over top and you wanna double clamp it, maybe even triple clamp it. Mine is double clamped and it doesn't leak at all. So um, obviously that works for me at least. Um, <clears throat> or you can put some kind of a, a, a flare on the end and then you can only use one clamp, but I mean, nothing wrong with, you know, two clamps. I think you got to buy a pack of four anyways. Um, so from there, a little bit of fuel line. Now I bought this metal fuel filter simply only for the reason just to keep trash out of the pump. That is the only reason it's not serving as a different type of filter instead of my regular stock filter. It's just to keep trash out of the pump. Um, also, inside the pump, in the bottom here, you're going to pull off, you don't have to, but to get the most fuel pressure, you want to pull off all of these, and um, there's a little tiny screen that sits inside the inlet. It's just a little piece of screen, tip the pump upside down, and it'll basically fall out. Um, but that will get you the most fuel pressure possible, um, and that was the whole reason for this guy. So that way I could take that screen out and not be worried about my pump getting destroyed. All right, from then, you're going to, let me get this thing to focus. You're gonna take your 3 8 fuel line, wind it up, 
and you're gonna cut your, obviously you're gonna cut your other fuel line over here too, double clamp. Um, and then from there, I just ran just positive, negative, up through the frame rail. And then let me see if I can scoot up here. It comes out of the frame rail there and then proceeds to go up to your battery. Now, I, I wasn't sure if my ECM was actually telling my factory lift pump to turn on while the truck was running just because the pressure was so low, I didn't know. And the pump would work if you bumped the key. So I knew the pump worked, I just didn't think there was any way that it was running. So um, what I ended up doing is I just hardwired my pump, both my pumps to the same switch. So I have both lift pumps running and not running through the ECM so I can just eliminate that problem altogether. So I will go up to the engine bay and I'll show you that now. Ooh, pretty. So, what I did is I took a, actually a, a pre-wired light bar harness because um, it comes with a fuse, it comes with a relay already pre-wired, all you do is hook up positive, negative, and then hook up your switch, um, which it comes with a switch, you don't have to use that, but I chose to use that. Um, so, also another great thing is I somehow ended up with a light bar harness that had the exact same plug for a light bar that my factory lift pump had. So it was very easy for me because I unplugged my factory lift pump, plugged my light bar harness, or my new wiring harness, right into the factory lift pump to give it power. And I just cut the connector off the other side and wired it to my um, Holly pump. So uh, another thing you can do is I ran it right to the toggle switch just because I'll explain why actually. So in the fuse box, this right here is your fuel system relay. So what you can do is this very end prong right there, you can put your fuel pump switch wire into there and that will turn on with your key. And the key in the on position, not the accessory. So you can do that and skip the switch. But in your case may be different, but in my case, um, my truck, after the f maybe the fourth or fifth start, it was starting to have starting issues. I think it was because of too much pressure in the in the VP. It couldn't overcome the fuel pressure that the pumps were putting out so that it could get fuel into the motor. So I ended up switching back to a regular toggle switch and um, it works perfect. Now I just, just leave it off, turn the truck on, turn it on, turn the truck off, turn the switch off. So a little extra step, but I know it's gonna work and I'm not, I don't have to worry about it. I know it's going to start every time. So. But now we're going to go in the truck. I'm going to show you show you what the fuel pressure is at idle. And the only thing I have hooked up is the Holly and the factory lift pump, which may or may not be working. So we are going to turn key on. There's a switch right there. Start the truck. Turn the switch on. extra step to hit one switch but that's a price I'm willing to pay to know that it's gonna work but that's pretty much all I got to say about that I uh, I really could have used this video when I was doing mine so I really hope this video is going to help somebody um, I do plan on getting a, an actual fast uh, fast 150 in the future um, but right now with everything going on and everything I just just can't put the money out for it so um, I may run this till the pump dies. I pump dies, I may even throw another one on there. They're only $120 and two wires and 
two hose clamps. So I mean, really, really affordable to get you know fuel pressure. The only thing you're missing out is the water separator, but you're still you're still utilizing your factory filter. So if you keep up with your filters, obviously it's not as gonna not gonna be as good as fast by you know by any means, but still be better than no lift pump and a bad VP because nobody wants that. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you like, you know, share, comment, subscribe if you want to. But thanks for watching. We'll see you later.